I think everyone, I think it's as of right now, the 2022 NFL draft will be one draft that we'll remember for a long time, obviously with the, the amount of picks we got from the Tyreek Hill uh, deal. But two of those guys are continuing to show why they were picked so high uh, through three weeks of the season. Chiefs DB Trent McDuffie's PFF's highest rated defensive back in the NFL, leaving the team in tackles with 16 and forced fumbles with two. And edge rusher George Karloff, it's our guy, George the Animal, uh, has two sacks and a sixth in the league with 16 pressures. And now this is the interesting part. His 16 pressures are only behind Aiden Hutchinson, Max Crosby, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett, and Micah Parsons, which is, I think, just wow. wild that he's up there with those, with those guys. I mean, because those are premier edge rushers in the league. Um, oh, yeah. My question, yeah. my question to you, JD. Obviously, there's a lot that has stood out. I mean, they're talking about those numbers um, for both these guys. But what has surprised you the most so far uh, in this sophomore season for both these guys? Uh, what has surprised me? Uh, maybe uh, the strides that uh, McDuffie has made as fast as he has, just adjusting to the to the speed of the game in the NFL. Uh, and maybe. maybe I was expecting that because of last year. You know, he missed a couple of games because he was hurt, and you know he comes in a little bit later. But he he caught up to it. He caught up to it. I I I, I seen his talent in, in in college. You know, when you look at the film, man, he he he, he jumps off the board. You see it. You see why he was picked so high uh, because of his cover skills. Him just being in like the low center of gravity. Him being in the guy you know manned up. But you know what? More importantly, I I like about McDuffie. He's almost, he's almost a sure tackler. I've seen him come up, man. You're talking leading tackle on the game. And, and sometimes, you know, when you see corners or safeties being lead tacklers, you don't want those guys to be lead tackler because that means something's going wrong up front. Okay. Somebody not doing their job on the D line and, and linebackers that it gets to the second level, second or third level. But what I see is he's recognizing plays. He's recognizing and he's coming up and he's making them. Man, I, I see, I forgot what it was, but I, uh, can't remember what play it was, but I, he made a play in the game. I was just like, "Whoa, my goodness!" Like, how did he get down there in the box that fast? You know, as a corner to come up and make the play because it was like uh, they almost ran a blitz, a little pressure from the outside. I think Trample came from the outside, but McDuffie filled the lane like a linebacker, and it was almost like any other corner would have set back five or ten yards to try to make that play, maybe seven yards. He's right up there, two or three yards, making the play. And I was just like, that's tough to see a corner come do that. That's a guy that 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 knows and recognizes what the scheme is. Okay. That's great awareness from, from him, uh, which is a rarity for a corner to come up there and make plays and one actually want to tackle. So he he's been he's been phenomenal, man, these past three games. He has. Uh he's got that swagger, he's got that about him, the confidence. And I told I told you this before. The very first game, it looked like he wanted to be the best. I think in his mind, he's pushing to be the best. And I think once he got to the understanding and figuring things out, he's like, oh, yeah, I can play with these guys. Okay? Not only can I play with these guys, but I'm going to be the best when I come out here to come play. So that in itself with, with McDuffie. So what do you think about that? What do you, what do you think about McDuffie himself? I know. I, 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 I mean, he's one of those guys that like – and it's cut from the same cloth as a Legereus Knee type where he you can kind of – Swiss Army enough where you can kind of put him all, all over the field. And Spags loves these like utility type players where you can play him in the box, you can play him in nickel, you can play him in the slot, you can play him uh, guarding your number one corner. You can do it all. And I think it's one of those things where Snead kind of caught on pretty fast with that, and he was a late-round pick. But, like, it's not really – you don't see those type of guys that often. And to have two of those guys on the same team – I think I think McDuffie's good, taking a lot from what he's learned from Snead so far, but also like putting his own little flair to it. Yeah, because yes. you're right. He makes he makes plays that you're not expecting, and at this point, you're like you have to expect it with him now. And yeah, he's, I mean, he's been everything we've wanted and, and more. I, I tell you what, I, I can almost see Spags also telling him, man, like you could be one of the best to have a coach. He's probably telling him that too, and so I'm I'm sure Spags is holding him up. I, I'm guaranteed he, he's he's motivating him to say, hey, look, man. Like you're a hell of a player, okay? Maybe considered a small guy, stuff like that. He said, "But shit, the way that you play is incredible." I didn't mean to cuss on it, like it, you know. But he's, you know, I'm sure he's saying those things, like you know, dag on. But that, that's, I can see that. I can see him talking about McDuffie that way. Mm -hmm. Now, going to George, the animal Kolafkis, okay? 
Now he's he's you know sixth in, in pressures. That that is that is surprising. That is surprising because we're talking about he's he's in a league with some some heavy dudes. Yeah. Dudes have been doing it for a while. Just doing it at a high level. And so I think this is uh kind of a, a, a honoring a, a you know giving some paying some homage to the work that he did with Tom Bahali. Okay. Tamba helped him out, and he says so much. He says it so, like, look, Tamba helped me out coming out there working with me. And you can see it where Tamba, you know, his his passion about the game and the excitement and the things he's given to him, he's letting him understand how you attack these guys, how you approach things in a game. And, and, and George is just, he's he's paying off of it. You know, he's just using his ability and talent that Tamba recognized and saying, man, these are the things you could do. There's no reason why your name shouldn't be up here with some of the top ones in here in the league. So he's just been doing that, and I love it. I love the the relentless attitude that he has. Uh, and so I just want him to keep coming. I want that to to translate into more sacks and more sacks, right? And that's the thing about it, you know. So I want I want to see him right now, man, make it at least a twelve sack season, you know, if not more. So he he's he's right on the trajectory of, of getting that. Uh, he he can he can definitely do it. He's going to be one on one with some guys. Uh, he, he's I think kind of his body type, he seemed like he's a little undersized a little bit. Maybe he doesn't seem as big as TJ Watt. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just doesn't. He doesn't have the girth. Yeah. And that's, I think that's that's one of the things. Because I seen one of the tackles kind of swallowing him up a little bit. I'm like, hey, look a little small. But he he's effective. He, he's like a he's like an alley cat. You know, just getting on you. Or just jumping all over these jokers. And that's what I love. Because as long as he has that, that drive, uh, you know, just that passion he has, just that that killer instinct. He's just gonna keep making plays. He's just gonna keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And it's like the the tackle's like, "Dad, God, like, why don't you stop?" And he's like, "No, nah, I'm just gonna keep coming." And so that's what I want to see from a guy like that, man. Uh, hopefully, that translates not just with him, but you know, to over there to, to King, uh, you know, Felix, you know. Him getting some do watching what he's doing, and I think all of this is infectious. It pays off, goes down the line, goes to everybody out there. Uh, so he's playing at a high level, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see it. I'm so happy to see it because we talked about this guy. This is the guy that we wanted, wasn't it, Marcus? Yes, this is the guy I want to talk about. I'm like, this is the dude that I want here with the Chiefs. And I said, we need a guy like that that has a high motor, nonstop, no quit in him, got all heart, and you know, all cojones, and he's coming. We're seeing it. We're seeing it, man. So that's all, man. I, that, too. And this was fresh it's after. Been, this is fresh after the Bengals uh, loss when we, when we talked about this. Like, like a month later, we started doing pre-draft stuff. Um, yeah. We wanted a guy like Hendrickson and, and Hubbard. We wanted guys like that, and we wanted guys yeah. who's nonstop motors, like you are going to keep coming all day long. And that's that, we, we got what we wanted, and that's what he is. We got what we wanted, and those guys. I'm telling you or tackle and tight end, when we're blocking guys like that, those guys are problems. They are a problem, you know, because they just constantly, constantly coming. There's just no quitting them. I don't care how much you beat on them, whatever you do, he's just not going to quit. He's not, you know, he don't, he don't know what that means. He doesn't know what that means. What would you say, I mean, we're obviously praising both these guys, but what would you say so far, something that you, you kind of want them both to kind of improve on as they, I mean, obviously second year guys, there's still plenty of things that they improve on, but what would you say is one big thing that you kind of want to see as the season progresses a little bit, you want to see a little bit more of? I mean, it, really it, you, at this point, what you want to see with these guys is consistency. You just want to make sure it's consistent all the way through. Uh, because once you establish that, you know, you have, you know, elite things in you, uh, now you want to make it, all the way consistent each and every game. And so I want to see more sacks come out of Kalafkis. I want to see more things come out of McDuffie. I want to see, I want to see some, you know, interceptions on his side. Yeah. Right. Uh, so those are the things that I, I, I definitely want to see. And then they'll get to that point, but they're still growing. These still, these guys are still young. I ain't saying they arrived. We just, what we're doing is recognizing the talent that they have. Uh, and they've been showing it, you know, thus far. And so I hope that just continues. I hope that continues. And I think it will. Yeah. I mean, usually you see a sophomore, what comes with a sophomore year is a sophomore slump. And so far with the sophomores, we with the, on our team, we had a lot on defense. I haven't really seen much of that. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that, that tells me these guys are hungry. That, that, that tells me their mentality is about getting better, right? Uh, and so, yeah, we, we, we can't always – everybody, the sophomore slum is not going to be, uh, you know, with everybody, you know, going through that. But, yeah, yeah, these guys, man, they, uh, they've they been out there balling. We just I want, I want to keep seeing it. I want to keep seeing it. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, when I saw that he was uh, sixth in pressures behind all those guys, it, and crazy enough, because I, I read that list, I read that from one to, to, to five, so one, Aiden Hutchinson has the most, fifth is Michael Parsons. And we hear all these things about Michael Parsons being the uh, possibly the MVP or defensive player of the year, and Carl yeah. is only has one less uh, pressure than him, 16 to 17 pressures between the two of them. That's just like... Man, this was like the the fourth the edge rusher in the in the, uh, picked in that draft, and Aiden Hutchinson was the number one guy. And then we're talking Carl Lawson at the end of the first round. I mean, do okay, so I, I'll probably ask this later. So, uh, where was this high pressure count? And, and and is any of this like the Chris Jones effect? Does anybody attribute to maybe Chris, or did he was he was doing it before then? I think um, I think he had a, a lot on uh, on Sunday. I think I think a I think a bulk of it came on Sunday. I guess yeah. the Bears. Yeah, he, he did a good job. He did a good job, man. Bringing pressure, he did. I want to say he had eight on Sunday. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. So yeah, no, he, and, and the thing Keep is, he, he primarily plays on the right tackle. The Carl Loftus does, and that that right tackle is the was the only starting guy they had. Who was the only starting guy who wasn't hurt? It was our guy Darnell Wright. Um. Yeah. I know it. Gave him some work. Gave the rook a little, a little work, didn't he? Yeah, Gave the rook a little work. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.